crazed drug giant who had to die. One of the three drug dealers cold-bloodedly executed in Essex was killed because he was going berserk on drugs and trying to muscle in on the turf of other criminals, police have revealed. Patrick Tate, 37, had become dangerously deluded and out of control after embarking on a massive drugs binge on his release from prison six weeks before his death. Described as a giant of a man, he took heroin, cocaine, cannabis and ecstasy in large amounts as well as pumping himself full of steroids to build his body up to his huge size. He was by nature a violent man, and with the use of these drugs he was becoming more or less totally out of control, says Detective Superintendent Ivan Dibley, who was leading the murder investigation. I believe he was the catalyst for the killing. He had been trying to muscle in on a fairly slick organisation, which had been running quite well without him, and he was upsetting the apple cart. We know of one or two instances where he attacked people while running amok on drugs, and had ruffled the feathers of other gang members since his release from prison. Police believe the other two victims, Craig Rolf, 26, and Tony Tucker, 38, simply might have been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Victim attacked pizza manager. Murdered drug dealer Patrick Tate put a pizza company manager in hospital in a frenzied attack just two days before he was shot dead. Manager Roger Ryle, 21, was left with head wounds and blood streaming down his face when Tate came storming into his pizza shop and threw a till across the room, punched him and smashed his head against a glass plate on a draining board. The attack was provoked by an argument over a pizza Tate, 37, wanted to order from the London Pizza Company, a Britannia court, Bazardon. Mr Ryle said, a woman phoned up asking for a pizza which we don't do. Tate grabbed the phone and started swearing down the phone. I wasn't going to take that, so I said get rid of the attitude and I will send you a pizza. That made him worse and he slammed the phone down. He arrived half an hour later, picked up the till and he threw it across the room. Backed out of the office and I pushed the panic button which alerted the police. He punched me in the face and smashed my head down on a glass plate on the draining board. Mr Ryle and his staff said they were only able to relax after they had read about Tate's death. Pat Tate blamed me for attempt on his life. A witness at a gangland triple murder trial has told how one of the victims has blamed her for an earlier attempt on his life. Annette Damon told the old jury that murdered drug baron Pat Tate claimed she was responsible for a shooting at his house in November 1994. Tate, 37, suffered a gunshot wound to his arm following the attempted murder at his bungalow in Gordon Road, Bazardon. Tate and Associates Tony Tucker, 38, of High Road Fobbin, and 26-year-old Craig Rolfe of Kalsha Avenue, Chafford 100, were blasted to death with a shotgun as they sat in their Range Rover in Workhouse Lane, Retterdon, on December 6, 1995. The trio had been lured there on the promise of a large cocaine deal, unaware that an ambush had been laid for them. They had only been outraged at poor quality cannabis, allegedly supplied by 54-year-old Michael Steele, who was jointly charged with the killings along with his accomplice, Jack Worms. Both Steele of Great Bentley, Essex, and the 36-year-old Worms of Brockford, Suffolk, deny the charges. The jury heard how Mrs Damon had known Tate for about two years before his death. Mr David Lederman QC, representing Worms, asked Mrs Damon, Tate, would you agree, was a deeply unpleasant man? Miss Damon replied, yes. The lawyer added, and for no reason Tate blamed you for him being shot. Mrs. Damon said, yes. Mr. Lederman continued, which was completely untrue. Mrs. Damon replied, yes. She said she had been accompanied by a then boyfriend car dealer, Barry Dorman, on a day trip to Ostend on November 16th, 1995. The couple met up with Tate, Craig Rolfe and three teenage girls at a cuff bar in Ostend. Annette, Mr. Dorman and Tate left to go to his hotel room where she told the jury she saw bundles of notes laid out on her bed. Miss Damon said, I thought it was a car deal. I don't know how much was there. Pat was very hyped up. He looked on edge. He was very fidgety and was rushing about all over the place. It is then alleged that Mr. Dorman and his girlfriend took £30,000 cash back with them to the UK, which was later collected by Tucker and Tate. The money is alleged to have been part of a cash refund from an Amsterdam drug dealer following a cannabis deal which went wrong. Mr Dorman told the court he had earlier lent Tate £10,000 from which he thought was for a car deal. He said, I knew Tate very well and I often loaned him money to buy cars. 
I lent him it as a friend, but I was particularly forced into going with him to Ostend. He seemed to be quite desperate. Mr Dorman said that while he was at Ostend he met another man who he did not know. The man is believed to be Michael Steele. But when Mr Dorman and Miss Damon attended Colchester Police Station in July 1996, they failed to pick out Steele from an identity parade. Steele was alleged to have masterminded the drugs operation. The court heard that during a police search of Steele's house last May, a wallet containing a Dutch phone card was found. It is alleged that Steele was involved in the importation of cannabis from Amsterdam to the UK. Both Steele and Worms denied the importation charges. Steele also denies possessing a pump-action shotgun. Co-defendant Peter Corey of Clacton Essex denies conspiracy to import cannabis. The trial continues. Barron's horrific gunshot injuries. A pathologist told an old Bailey jury how a drug Barron's head exploded when he was ruthlessly gunned down at close range. Tony Tucker was shot three times, twice in the head and once in the back of the head on December 6th, 1995. He was found dead inside a Range Rover in Retterdon next to the bodies of his friends Patrick Tate and Craig Rolfe. Michael Steele, 54 of St Mary's Road, Great Bentley, and Jack Worms of Brockford, Suffolk, denied murdering the three men. Paula Lannis, a pathologist for 22 years, told the court there was an extra injury on Tucker's head. She explained it had not been caused by a bullet wound, but by his heavily fractured skull breaking the skin. Miss Lannis said, with an injury like this, the head just explodes. She revealed Mr Tucker, 38, of High Road Fobbing, would not have been aware his life was in danger. He was found in a relaxed pose with his legs crossed, his hands in his lap and holding a mobile phone. Craig Rolfe, the 26-year-old driver of Kalsha Avenue, Chafford 100, took two shots to the head, one exiting between his eyes. Patrick Tate, 37, of Gordon Road, Bazardon, was shot once in the head, once in the lower chest, piercing his liver, and he received a superficial flesh wound to his head. John Burns, a forensic scientist who specialises in shotguns, said the weapon had been a 12-bore shotgun, either a pump-action or self-loading model. He found eight separate wounds on the bodies and said the shots had been fired at close range. When he arrived at the murder scene in remote workhouse lane, Retterdon, the court heard he noticed blood dripping from the Range Rover, forming puddles on the snowy ground. Then he found seven shotgun cartridges scattered around. They were all from the same gun. The eighth cartridge has never been recovered. Mr Burns revealed each man was probably shot once to disable them or kill them before the rest of the shots were fired. The case continues. Oh. Oh, 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 oh,